welcome to Knoxville, Tennessee on this third Saturday in October. It's starting to feel like autumn and ball fans are eagerly awaiting the showdown with longtime foe Alabama. It's an adrenaline charged atmosphere as we get ready for kickoff here on Rocket Top. SEC on CBS. This afternoon, Alabama ranked number one. Comes in against Tennessee, a team with only one defeat, and ranked number nine. It is the third Saturday in October, and a time when standings become worth mentioning and noticing. Look at the West. Aggies and Alabama both undefeated. They will play in Tuscaloosa next week. In the East, the important fact here is that despite the loss last week, Tennessee still controls its own destiny in its quest to reach the championship game in Atlanta. Hi once again, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. Always a pleasure to welcome you to Knoxville. And Gary, this is the fourth of four consecutive games, each of which has been a challenge for Tennessee. And Vern, we've been right there. And, and they have earned my respect. I mean, this team, whatever it takes, they have produced it. And you would admit that they could be a little bit tired, but you know, they got the gold standard across the field now. And if anything can get you ready to play, it's Alabama, because if you don't, you're gonna get run out of the stadium. Well, Tennessee comes in absent the presence of six starters. How do they account and, and complete that? Yeah, you know, Vern, I think when this case, when you got so many guys like that in backups, you got to look to your stars. I mean, you got to have those guys lead the way. Derek Barnett on defense has to come through. They're going to get Jalen Hurd back. They're, they're running back. They got Josh Dobbs. But I think a new emerging star is one Alvin Kamara. He showed last week that he is one of the tough backs in all of this conference. He was at Alabama, transferred to Tennessee, but he's a difference maker and one of the guys today that has to come through for this Tennessee football team. Not a shock at all for us to see Alabama undefeated at this point. What is, I think, surprising is to see that they have a starting freshman quarterback. Never happened for Nick Saban in his whole coaching career. Jalen Hurts, the first true freshman quarterback. We talk about all of the great things he does, his speed, his size, but he would not get this job if he didn't have the composure that he showed in this game last week against Arkansas. Watch, gets his head pushed into the ground. He doesn't get up, he doesn't fight, he doesn't make it about him. He shows the composure necessary to be a true freshman quarterback at Alabama. That's everything you have to know about the Alabama quarterback. This is the 99th meeting between Alabama and Tennessee. It is a rivalry in which great reputations are earned and Hall of Fame recognition often comes with it. We will have 102,000 on hand by the time this thing kicks off. Last week, Tennessee lost to A&M in part 
because they turned it over seven times. How are they addressing that? For more, here's Ali the Force. Vernon Gary, it's hard to believe they were even competitive in that game despite that many turnovers. Butch Jones said he's never been a part of anything like this. It infuriates him every day, and they're doing everything possible to correct those mistakes. For example, they have a drill in practice where they connect a harness to the ball with a string on it. They have the defenders try to pull the ball out with the string while the ball carriers have the ball. The defense said they're trying to make it the most harsh environment for this offense possible. Coach Jones also told me they watched every single one of those seven turnovers in practice, and Josh Dobbs said he took personal responsibility to make sure they started every day of practice with game-like focus and intensity. Despite the fact that they lead the nation with 21 fumbles this year, they have recovered their own fumbles most of the time, but it's that 25% they didn't that could be the difference between a championship season or a bust. All right, Ellie, thank you. There is Josh Dobbs. He had a couple of fumbles last week. He's actually had uh, seven fumbles and eight interceptions, 15 turnovers. He got most of those back when he fumbled them. And the weather here in mid-October in eastern Tennessee, 82 degrees, slight humidity, and an equally slight wind out of the southwest. Remember when you said perfect on that field goal and I argued with you? Yeah. You can say perfect right okay. now. <laughs> it's perfect. Yes, it is. <laughs> Three quarters of the games have been played on the third Saturday in October. It just seems like it always should be that way. Alabama won the toss and they have deferred the option to the second half. That means they will kick off Adam Griffith to do that. And Tennessee will get the ball. It's Evan Berry and Micah Abernathy, the two deep men. This will be returned from the three, Evan Berry. Nice return out near the 28 yard line. And it's time to introduce the cow. Chick-fil-A starting lineups, and that leads us to the senior Josh Dobbs. Multifaceted young man. He's 6'3", 210, an aerospace engineering major. 20 total TDs this season, but as Gary said, he's dropped it a few, a few times. He has, but he's the whole offense. They're going to start Hurd and Kamara in the backfield. Not a surprise. Sweep to the left, it's Camara. And a nice first down gain after the 35-yard line. Eddie Jackson made the stop. I think it's a good play to get Jalen Hurd back in the game. Number one is going to lead the play and gets a good block on the edge. A positive play to start out for both running backs. Now Hurd sat out last week with an undisclosed injury. And uh, Camara just had a brilliant game. Here's Dobbs. In trouble, but he can't escape it, as you see. And he's got his tight end open at the 50 for the first down. Ethan Wolf, number 82. Wilson, we've been watching him three straight weeks. He basically demoralizes defenses when he does this. You've got to stop, and all of a sudden he's on the outside, the perimeter, and he delivers a first down. That is a gain of 16, and they are across midfield. Right side, Jalen Hurd. And let's introduce you to the remainder of the Tennessee offense. Some changes up front where Bullware gets a start. And so does Coleman Thomas, Dylan Wiseman, and Jayshon Robertson both out with injuries. First substitution for Tennessee in the game, and Alabama matches it with the substitution themselves. Second down three. Pressure. Comes right side. Dropped. Jason Kroon, who dropped a couple last week. Alabama's defense. Allen Payne, Tomlinson, and Anderson up front. Minka Fitzpatrick at Arkansas last week. Three interceptions, one of which he returned for a 100-yard touchdown. They did, that uh, defensive unit for Alabama, give up four 100 yards passing last week. Third down. There's the ball game right here for Tennessee. Can they win third down? Four-man rush. Camaro. 
Hangs on to it. Sure that did. should be enough to move the chain. It's the same play they scored the touchdown against Georgia right here. Kamara in the slot. A slight pick that could have been called from the outside receiver. Picks it out, and Kamara is such a good receiver as a running back. Returns punts, obviously. Dobbs keeps it, and he is trapped. Drop for a loss. Ryan Anderson, the first there's, man there. Vern, there's so many difficult things to do against this Alabama defense, but maybe the toughest is to get outside them in the running game. They set the edge as good as anybody in college defense, and they've been doing it for as long as Nick has been at Alabama. Loss of three. Josh Malone, top of the screen. There are three wide to the left. Here is the pass coming near, and Ryan Anderson I think got a hand on it and knocked it away from Kamara. So third and 13. And again, they'll go three wide left, two to the right. The inside man on the right side is Jawan Jennings. He is up on the line of scrimmage and they'll bump and run with him. Now heard in the backfield. Third and 13. Fourth and a mile. Tim Williams, pass rushing specialist, number 56. That's his fourth and a half sack this season. Well, if Miles Garrett isn't the best pass rusher, and if Derek Barnett isn't the best pass rusher, this guy is the best pass rusher. Comes off the edge, four man rush, just takes the inside move, gets inside Chance Hall, and it's no contest. That will leave it up to Trayvon Trevor Daniel to punt on fourth down. He has been a weapon for Tennessee. Into the end zone, touchback. A 58-yard punt. Stars are shining not over Alabama. They're shining in Tennessee or they will be in about five hours. <laughs> Alabama gets it offensively for the first time. And it's time to introduce you to the Chick-fil-A yeah. offense for Alabama. And that means we start inside that group with Jalen Hurts the freshman quarterback. Well, if you can imagine, Vern, a true freshman quarterback coming onto a team that won a national championship and beating out other five-star quarterbacks. It's just not like they had nobody there in competition. And he wins the job, and he leads them to the undefeated season so far. There's a little toss on the sweep. This goes to our Darius Stewart. And he's out to the 26 yard line. Offensively for Alabama, Robinson, Pierce Baker, Bozeman, Lester Cotton replaces Alphonse Taylor at right guard. Taylor will not play because of a concussion, which was not described as an extra uh, upper body extremity. Hertz keeps it. He's a dual threat quarterback. He is Vern. Get this. Uh, Jalen Hurts has started two games in the SEC on the road, Ole Miss and Arkansas. He is 32 for 48 in those games combined, 411 yards passing, 166 yards running. Pretty good job on the road. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's decent. Yes. First down, 10. Up the middle. It's Bo Scarborough. Number nine, they will use three and perhaps four. Running backs defensively, Vereen. There's Balin Buchanan who gets the start at one corner today. Second down. Stack receivers, top of the screen. Left side. It'll be third down. Scarborough's second carry. 
Watch the tape of the Arkansas game. It was Bo Scarborough's best game. He rushed for 56 yards. 40 of them were after contact. He looks to finally be loosening up and be the back that they thought he was going to be. Third and two. Hurts rolling out, being chased. In trouble. Terrific one on one. Rashawn Golden, number seven. And Vern, that's the key what you just said. If there was a problem against Texas A&M when you looked at that game, it was missed tackles. When you have your opportunity, you got to make the play. Left side of the screen, he makes the one-on-one -on -one tackle, something they did not do well last week against Texas A&M. Look at the respect Alvin Kamara is giving J.K. Scott. Scott, <laughs> yes. Kamara's all the way back at the 10. The line of scrimmage is the 34. Scott having a really, really fine year. Over a 46-yard average. Oh, my goodness. No fair catch called for. He's still loose. He is still loose. And he got some wonderful downfield blocking. Right. I don't know if he needed it, but he got some. He is special. We talked to Nick Saban about him. He says, oh, we knew he'd be special. He's faster than everybody thinks. He breaks tackles. He's a great receiver. What a weapon. 62-yard punt, 31 on the return. It's now time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success, Gary. Vern, we talked about how Alabama sets the edge with their safeties as good as anyone. You must attack or be willing to attack up the middle. A good side for Tennessee is last week against Texas A&M. They did a great job of running between the tackles. Whether they used the running backs or they used Josh Dobbs, they ran it, they forced it, and they made A&M stop the inside run game. Look what they did all season, the first five games, and what they did against A&M last week. You cannot concede. As good as Alabama is on defense, stopping the run, best in the country, you can't concede the inside run game. This is Jalen Hurd between the tackles, and he's out to the 47-yard line. Well, maybe over right tackle. Yeah, that was inside. Listen, he had a good game a year ago in that close football game against Al Alabama. He had 18 rushes for 92 yards in that game. He looks fresh. He should be fresh. He took a week off, and he looks like he's ready to beat the Jalen Hurd that we all knew. Three wide to the left side. Play action. He took out the Hurd. Nothing good. Secure tackle from Sean Dion Hamilton, number 20. And that's what Alabama's secondary is known for, being great tacklers. And they showed it right there. Last week, Tennessee had 391 yards passing. 314 of them came after the catch. Let's see if Alabama can cat tackle the catch in this game. Alvin Kamara is now in the backfield. He comes right and hit behind the line. Tim Williams. No, well, that play didn't uh, have any success, but what a game he had at Texas A&M last week. Yeah. You know, Chance Hall has been a big improvement for the Tennessee offensive line, but he is struggling with Tim Williams. He's known as a pass rush specialist, but Tim Williams so far is kind of owning him in this game. Got to keep an eye on that matchup. They cannot lose that matchup. Tennessee. Third down, 17. Wolf had moved over to the left side. Three-man rush. Dobbs pressured and dropped. Jonathan Allen. That's his fifth sack. And, and Tim Williams, two number one picks in the NFL draft. Three-man rush, and they meet at the quarterback. Both of those players could have turned pro a year ago. Both would be playing NFL football, and both will be making a lot of money after the next draft. Player down. That's Brett Kendrick. Now this is a Tennessee offensive line. Already with two subs 
in the starting lineup. Yeah, he got rolled on from behind his left ankle. It might have been the opposite tackle, Chance Hall, that got him from behind. Time called. And we'll be right back. Brett Kendrick getting tent attention on the uh, Tennessee bench. And he is about to join a long list of those who are out. Maven, Kirkland, Sutton, Dylan Wiseman, Malik Foreman out. Cortez McDowell, Danny O'Brien, by the way, the young man who uh, seemingly was really, really critically injured last week, actually flew back with the team after a checkup at a college station hospital. And then on Monday was dismissed from the team for a violation of team rules. And the last guy you saw, Preston Williams, started the season with the starting receiver. And he chose to leave the team. This is Eddie Jackson at the nine. Uh, there is no flag thrown. And Jackson, now there's a flag on the far side of the field. Nothing over here. That's a 60 yard punt and it was a 60 yard punt outside the numbers where it was caught. It was a great punt by Trevor Daniel again is a big weapon for this Tennessee team. During the return block in the back receiving team number 23. That's the difference in the goal. First down. Aaron Robinson on special teams. That was a 60 yard punt. Time call. All right, Adam, thank you so much. Let's get an injury update quickly from Ali LaForce. Vern Kendrick is dealing with the left ankle injury. He kept pointing at the top of his left ankle. They undid the tapes, retaped it, and told him they're going to stick him back out there, see how it feels, and go from there. All right. And this drive will begin at the nine yard line. New running back in for Alabama, Damian Harris, number 34. As we mentioned, they will use three, possibly four backs on offense. Yeah, our Darius Stewart is back there too. Fine, again, healthy. Lines up in the backfield. Missed two games with a knee injury. Calvin Ridley is wide to the right. Play clock at six. Stewart in motion. Hurts. Now uh, he'll fire it. He's got a man wide open and Ridley lost concentration and dropped it. Oh. Well, one of the notes I wrote on my board is don't wait around for Alabama to beat themselves. You know, I've seen them lose football games and they usually don't do it themselves. Ole Miss got one, I remember that. But usually you have to take the game away from them. Drop pass, that does not happen very often. Especially from that guy. Yeah, exactly. Second down, 10. Sweep, almost caught at the goal line, but he gets out of there. It's our Darius Stewart. One of the things that uh, Lane Kiffin does a great job, we talked about the stats with Jalen Hurts, is controlling his passing game, what he actually is going to throw. 96 of his passes have been 10 yards or less. If you combine 10 yards or less or behind the scrimmage, he knows he's got a good defense and he doesn't ask too much from his young quarterback. Third down four. Tennessee blitz. Hurts rolls right, drills it, caught first down. Our Darius Stewart just across the 20. Speaking with Lane Kiffin, I said, well, what's he like? And he, he goes, he's got great composure, number one. He's got all the skills. I said, he reminds me a little bit the composure that Blake Sims has and the speed. He said, yes, but he's going to, he has a bigger arm and long term, he has more upside. Obviously, Blake is a 50 receiver. There's Harris going right, going by the first time. And that could be enough for the first down out near the 33. It is. One of the challenges for Tennessee with all these injuries on defense, they're playing what they call a 4-2-5 defense. 
four down linemen, two linebackers, and five defensive backs. Against Arkansas, against Kentucky, Alabama ran right at it. Ran outside zone right at that one less linebacker. First down, 10. This is Harris. He's got a lot of room. And he spins as he crosses the 50-yard line and is tackled by Micah Abernathy. That's the challenge. When you're losing three of your best football players, you've only got two linebackers on the field, and Alabama has the option of going right at you with the run game, but then every once in a while, you know they're going to go play action pass and go downfield. Sweep to the right. This is Joshua Jacobs. Same play. And he is the third running back we've seen in the ball game. Todd Kelly Jr. Outside zone. What's the only thing different right here is that Alabama, known for running more to their left, has been running to the right in this football game, staying away from Derek Barnett. Jobs, Dobbs, Jacobs, I think. Joshua Dobbs on my mind is Joshua Jacobs. And he's inside the 30. This drive began at the nine yard line. Where Alabama is so tough, Vern, is how good they are on first down. Against Arkansas, they had 27 first downs. They averaged 13 yards on first down against Arkansas. Jacob is the running back on second down and three. Whitley, they toss it. They've got the reverse coming near, near side. This is our Darius Stewart, two blockers in front. He is in for the touchdown. Yes, indeed. Darius Stewart got the last block to spring him into the end zone. What a call by Lane Kiffin. Run to the right, run to the right, run to the right. Come back with a reverse to the left. Gary Dieter. Got the key block downfield, number 11. Right there, and then Jalen Hurts gets the next one. How often do you see a quarterback there? I know. Right Darius Stewart gets the touchdown, got the quarterback and the wide receiver. Adam Griffith for the extra point. Got him a little mixed up there. I was doing it the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> it's allowed. Yes. Darius Stewart coming back as Byrne told you, another weapon as if Alabama needed one. From the Eastern, sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Well, that was a brisk 91 yard drive in eight plays. It consumed two minutes and 58 seconds on the clock. And Stewart got the touchdown. Short kick. Evan Berry. He's physical. Yes, he is. Down the sidelines, cuts inside, and is finally hauled down. There is a flag. It's at the 45-yard line of Tennessee. He's physical and runs through a couple tackles, and obviously he has the speed to get by there. Anthony Averett. Number 28 is the last guy to make the play. He had a chance. Or he would have gone. Here's Ken Williamson. Well, he's going to come over and explain this to Butch Jones. Williamson is the referee today. on the play, personal foul, face mask, on defense number 28, he declined, three return, holding number 35, 10 yards is by the foul, Tennessee ball, first down. Okay, was I confused or are you? I'm very confused. I thought, was it two penalties both on Tennessee? It well, he be, right? pointed yes. toward Alabama. Yes, it must have both been against Tennessee because yeah. they took this other way. They said, sure. I thought he said holding. Oh, well, we're checking. It wiped out a 67-yard return. And 
It's first down at the 35 yard line. Camara. Well, Gary mentioned that Camara started his collegiate career at Alabama. He's out of Norcross, Georgia. Became injured just as the season started, missed the first three weeks. And uh, Nick Saban told us last night it was their intention to play him, but he kind of fell behind. And at the end of the year, opted to transfer to Hutchinson Community College. He spent one year there. Piling them up now, aren't they? Yep. And, and again, injured. you can be as strong a running back as you want to be. You got to have some help from that offensive line. And right now, that Alabama elite front seven is winning. There he is. He was up. I saw him most of the time when I was watching Alabama's practice squad player giving scout team giving the look to the Alabama defense. Well, physically, a big difference with him and Jalen Hurd. Hurd's at 6'4, 240. Camara is a solid 215. Very solid. There's Dobbs. Pressure, caught, dropped. That's three already. Ruben Foster, who just might be an elite linebacker. Well, he is an elite linebacker. Might be the best in the country. Yeah, no doubt. that's where I was going. Lines back up at the second level. Looks in. And as he comes around the corner to make the play, you can see the speed to catch up to Dobbs on the play. Might be Jeremy Pruitt's biggest impact on this defense. They seem to be more aggressive with man on third down. Seem to be bringing an extra linebacker and, a, and, and crowding those running backs. If you help, he's coming at you. It comes the rush. Trevor Daniel, this is low. Eddie Jackson grabs it. And he had called for the fair catch at the 24. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to Alabama, Tennessee, or your favorite team. From signing day to game day, you'll get instant coverage of every moment from every angle. Download the CBS Sports app today. Seven nothing on this sun splash Saturday in Knoxville, Tennessee, the 99th meeting. Alabama, by the way, has won 18 games in a row, and they have defeated Tennessee each of the last nine encounters. Remember the last time Alabama had the ball. They were running the outside zone to the right. They were running away from Derek Barnett. And then they ran the reverse to get the big play. Joshua Jacobs is the running back. Hurts. Yes. A lot went wrong there. I think Trayvon Diggs, number seven, Corner blitz. It actually was a zone that time. Diggs might not be all that wrong that time. They were playing zone and bringing the corner. Bobby Shoup is giving Alabama everything he has early in the game. You don't want to go down again. Not against Alabama. Second down and 10 from the 25. Dylan Bates, number 17, was closest to that ball a moment ago. Blitz hurts as he gets hit. And that forces the incomplete pass. Colton Jumper, he's on in place of the injured Darren Kirkland, and Jumper has been a factor since he got into that starting line. There was. They showed the blitz from Jalen Hurd's left, and then they brought it from the field side to get third and long. Now, we saw Tim Williams and Jonathan Allen make an impact. Can Derek Burnett and Corey Vereen do the same thing? Remember, we talked in the open. Can they find stars to help? They got him in a tackle position right there. Hurts chased. Incomplete. And it was Corey Vereen, I think, that put the pressure on him. Yep. Just inside. Oh no, actually it was not. It was actually number 40 that made the Instead play. Instead of 50, yes. Demaria Mixon. Yes. yes. You know why uh, Vereen mixed it up by putting his hand up like he did something. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth down. J.K. Scott at a 62-yarder. Last time out, Camara's back at the 20. 
And the return is on all the way for Tennessee. Camara at the 16. Watch out. Oh, that's going to be 15. He was out of bounds. Oh, my goodness. They got it. Yeah, they're going to get 15. It took a little while, yeah. Yes. Sometimes when it happens on the friendly bench, it doesn't get called, but that was an obvious one. Keith Holcomb, number 42. And I'll tell you what, Kamara is limping on the play. That would be a tough guy to lose. He gets a real late hit, and it looks like his right ankle or knee is After bothered. the play was over, personal foul. Kicking team. 50 yards. the hip, didn't he? Yeah. So the 15 has been marked off against Holcomb and the Crimson Tide. And that gives Tennessee the ball at the 40 yard line with a minute to go in the first quarter of play. And Vern, uh, Brent Kendrick has not come in. Drew Richmond, number 51, is playing left tackle. So that's three subs in the offensive line for Tennessee. Blitz, Dobbs, incomplete. Right, a lot of the fans want to know 50 50 ball with Juwan Jennings to the outside going against Anthony Averett. Did he grab him? Yeah, it's just fighting right there. They're going to let that one go. Oh, he had him by the jersey. The back official did not see it. He was. Screened on that play that could have been called. And instead, it goes as an incompletion. Nothing doing on second down. Jalen Hurd. One more look to see how the back judge, the side judge was. For, see, he cannot see it. It was grabbed. He had Jersey and Jawan Jennings and the 100,000 fans were correct. That could have and should have been called. Field judge Glenn Fusick did not make the call. On third down, Hurd. Alongside Dobbs in the backfield, it's seven nothing. Screen pass intercepted, and here goes Alabama. Ronnie Harrison, touchdown. That is the tenth non-offensive touchdown of the year for Alabama. Fifty-eight yards. I was pretty sure Tennessee's defense couldn't shut out Alabama's offense. I think their hope was Tennessee's offense could shut out Alabama's defense. Answer. And that hasn't happened. No. That's nine games in a row they've had a non offensive touchdown. Adam Griffith for the extra point. It was supposed to be a safe screen pass. They grabbed the ball player. He's standing right here. Let's see what happens. Going to bring the player in motion. That's who the screen is going to go to, I believe. Yes, they grab him. When he throws the ball, it goes right over his head. Harrison with the interception, 58 yards. It was Ryan Anderson with the pressure on Joshua Dobbs. An inside play, the grabbing of the running back is really what allowed the ball to sail over the running back's hands and get the interception. Now how about that? A missed interference call inside the 20 yard line. And then the interception returned for a touchdown by Alabama. <laughs> Happens quickly, doesn't it? Fourteen nothing with 14 seconds to go first quarter. Fourteen nothing. Ninth straight game with a non offensive touchdown. How about that the longest yeah. streak by any team remember a Michigan State game Cyrus Jones had a touchdown a punt return and then in the national championship Kenyon Drake kickoff return for a touchdown so that adds it up to last year. 
Adam Griffith will kick off. Evan Berry with a 67 yard return wiped out by a penalty a moment ago and this will be a touchback. We talked about Jeremy Pruitt and how they use their linebackers. Reuben Foster has the blitz and the running back. Watch him engage the center as he's coming and go for the running back. He grabs Jalen Hurd just enough to cause the interception and the easy pick six. Now, Tennessee fans are saying, okay, we've been here before. Yes. But you're going to do it as you look at Jeremy Pruitt. You're going to do it to a Nick Saban team. It's going to be tough. 14 to nothing. Nick Saban, 96 and 3 with a 14 point lead. Fern, we did two of those three losses, and he had 14 point leads. Okay. Hey, this is the outright trivia question. Fern, we were out at dinner. Yeah. And you, <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder how Gary spends <laughs> Friday nights. It's coming up with stuff like this. All right. Okay. 2010. Cam Newton, remember the comeback? Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. 2013, the kick six. Remember them both. Now I do. And then the Ohio State game in the semifinal. Three losses. End of one. 14 zip. We might have a special guest coming. We'll find out after the commercial break. We welcome all of you back to England Stadium in Knoxville. 14 nothing as uh, tennis at uh, Alabama erupted. And take a look at the point differential for Tennessee yeah. this year. They've done it before. Yeah. Only problem is 19 plays so far for Tennessee. Seven negative plays already. Three traps already, three sacks that is. There's Hurd around the corner. Hard to get outside. Ruben Foster, he was the guy that made the play. Sideline to sideline. Christian Miller and Ruben Foster. Took him a couple years to get out there, but just the latest in the great middle linebackers, Reggie Ragland, C.J. Mosley, Rolando McClain, just the long line of middle linebackers for Alabama. Third down five. Alvin Camaro. Good to see him back on the field after that uh, Return which he was uh, thought pretty badly his balls. Nope. Yep, they're playing the sticks right now. Alabama, they know the pass rush is going to get there. They're playing third and six. You're going to have to try to go deep. Problem is, don't have the time. Easy to play DB when you know you're going to get that pass rush. Like that Super Bowl game we watched with Denver. Got to cover him for about a second and a half. That brings on Trevor Daniel again. Eddie Jackson deep. He waits at the 25 yard line. 14 nothing. Look and at this punting. He is. Well, uh, both of them have excelled, haven't they? Here's Jackson at the 10. And he's brought down at the 22 yard line. 14 nothing. Alabama leads it. We're in the first minute of the second quarter. 60 yard punt. 12 on the return will be right back. Fourteen nothing Alabama leading Tennessee. It's with real pleasure that we welcome back one of the revered figures in athletics at Tennessee. Peyton Manning who wore number 16 here number 18 in the NFL. Uh, you have maintained a very close relationship with your alma mater. Well, I sure have, Vern. It's been a very special place uh, to me. Started back in 1994, and in many ways, I've never left this place. And uh, always been special to uh, come back here, uh, usually on one bye week a year. This is my third game this season, and uh, just proud to be uh, just an ambassador for this great university. I'm not sure where <laughs> Gary. Oh, there's Gary. Look at this. <laughs> kind of. Sorry, I kind of assumed you'd be where's, uh, wearing the robe. Where's you know? Lionel Richie? Is he yeah. behind you? <laughs> That's right. Is he behind you? Kind of sorry, I just assumed. Uh, oh, I yeah. would have worn mine if I would have known. <laughs> I would have been out of here yeah. if both of you showed up in robes. <laughs> I want some football? Sure. Let's, Let's do, do some football. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, this is good. <laughs> good stuff. That's a good gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no, Deep Lionel. right side. Who is he ever? That's Calvin Ridley. Well, you have uh, had three games here. 
uh, this year, uh, and they've been coming from behind it's all along. By the way. Yeah. It's pretty the, comfortable, by the way. Is it? It looks, yeah, it looks, looks from you. It looks good. He, he may never nice. give his back. We realize we're that. We're at the Tuscaloosa next week. Let's try that. Yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, as you guys know, Tennessee games don't start until the uh, second half. So this, is just, right. this is just kind of pregame warm-ups here. Uh, we're just kind of toying with them, and we're going to get things going here in the second half. But uh, we certainly got our work cut out for us. Well, we said when they were down 21 a week or two ago, with it, they've got them right where they want That's them. That's right. That's yeah. right. I told Butch Jones, uh, I said, your job is to convince them that they're down 21 to nothing in pregame warm-ups. There was a petition to so that, start the scoreboard <laughs> at 21 nothing. I, I, I was in favor of it. <laughs> Second down and eight. And nothing doing this time as they got to Joshua Jacobs. Peyton, uh, as you watch football and you watch Tennessee and you watch those exciting football games, what do you miss more, the exhilaration or the intensity of preparing for a game, getting ready for a game? Well, you miss all of it, but obviously you guys have called some great games this year. And the Tennessee-Georgia game uh, a few weeks ago was special. I was in College Station. But there's nothing quite like SEC football, Gary, and this season's been really special. So you miss the atmosphere, but it's great to come back and, and just be a fan of these games. Third down. The need is eight. Calvin Ridley. Now our Darius Stewart in motion. They flip it out to Stewart. Sure was. It'll be fourth down. Elliot Berry led the way. Well, that's what you have to do. We talked all about this. Your back seven, your linebackers have to eat up space. Modern football, a lot of short passes. You've got to come up and hold those yards after catch. Now here's J.K. Scott as Butch Jones congratulates his defenders. And Alvin Kamara is deep at the 10 yard line again, showing the respect they have for J.K. Scott, young man out of Denver, Colorado. Nice and high again. They'll let this one bounce and it goes out of bounds not as effective as they had hoped it's out of bounds at the 24. Peyton you had a lot of thrills uh, the band meeting your teammates would you like to play quarterback when we come back for Tennessee why don't we pick your brain on what you see when we come back. Sure right. I'm out of eligibility playing wise but I'll give you what I can see, <laughs> okay. I see. in a row. <laughs> Free game, Peyton Manning, number 16 here at Tennessee. Introduced, Philip former his coach. Oh, kids, that was, uh, the, the ovation was thunderous. Well, this is a special place and great fans here. And uh, like I said earlier, these fans have supported me uh, in NFL stadiums uh, all across the country for the past uh, 18 years. And uh, we had a great reunion last night, a bunch of players that played during my time here. And nothing quite like the relationships you form with the fans, your teammates, coaches here in college. Uh, Peyton, you've earned the right to do about what you want to do now. What do you think's in your future? Before you answer that, my job's a terrible job. You would not want my job. I wouldn't. No, I don't this know. Not, it's pretty. You do not want it's this. It's good one. up here. You get to wear a robe. Because if you want and, it, uh, you know you're going to get it. You know get that, to, don't get, you? Get to come to Knoxville every <laughs> other Saturday. Don't, this is a yeah. bad this, job. This is not a good job. Not a bad gig. Uh, <laughs> I remember when we had this chat when you had sat out the year, and at the end of the quarter, Gary said to you, <laughs> "Don't do it, Peyton. I hope you play for another ten That's years." That's right. Well. I knew it was the right year to go out in style. I knew if Vern Lundquist was retiring from football, it was time right. for me to retire from football, right? All the legends are, are uh, stopping uh, football, and uh, it just seemed like the right time for me. But it, it's just been fun watching a lot of football this year, Gary. I watch you guys every so Saturday, obviously keep up with the NFL, but it's, it's kind of been fun being a fan this fall. When do you think you will make a decision about I, I, what you want to do? Yeah, it's hard to say. I, I kind of think the answer, I hope, will kind of come to me. And I think this fall you kind of find out what you miss, what you don't miss. And uh, uh, just, I think, the hope, I think the timing and the answer will just kind of come to me. But it really has been an enjoyable fall so hey, far. don't you just have to find something that captures your intensity that you took to football for 19 years? Isn't that what you're looking for? Well, certainly. I mean, obviously, football has provided quite the consistent routine for the past uh, 22 years and, and so you like to find something that kind of gives you somewhat that same schedule so we'll see we'll see well that was intended for Juwan Jennings it was incomplete 
Yeah, I, I would. I thought Tennessee might need these 50-50 balls. You know you're going to get bump and run. You got to challenge the bump and run, don't you, Pete? That's our that's our best chance right now with the injuries up front. Like to maybe get a pass interference call or get something to shorten these drives. Peyton, you know how brave we are, Vernon. I put you on a game with Alabama. There's about six people in Alabama that still like us. Two of them are relatives. After this, there's not going to be any more. You do know that. Uh, well, you? hopefully they'll forgive you. Uh, that's right. Where in the world? Maybe that gives you a little a little star. Here's the challenge. If he wears the robe in Tuscaloosa. That's right. No. Yeah. Now Next we'll find out. Yeah. See how tough I, yeah. <laughs> I want to see you interview Nick Saban wearing that robe. <laughs> that will be a first, Vern. And even in all years of TV, you'll never, you've never seen something like that. I will send you photos of that if it occurs. Please do. Please Stick do. with us. Okay. Just to say. Well, you faced this Alabama team four times. I think the 95 game was among your favorites, right? It snapped the lead. Sure did. It was a great game. They beat us uh, quite a few years in a row, and that play right there, we kind of we fumbled a, a few years in the past on the goal lines, so and we decided just to keep it on a blind bootleg and got in the end zone. And great memories uh, down there in Legion Field, that's for sure. You know, Peyton, uh, you and Eli got a lot of Arch's records in the NFL. You know, one of my I played against Arch. I tell you what, if you and Eli can have the same record as your pop and Olivia, your mom, raising your families, that might be the best part of your career. No doubt about it. Been really lucky uh, having, having two great parents, and uh, they've supported all of us, me, Cooper, and Eli, and all of our endeavors, and uh, just uh, just really appreciative and uh, really thankful, really grateful. Thank you, Gary. First down, 10. Alabama has Damian Harris in. Blitz. Oh, they didn't get to it. Hurts incomplete. Tried to get that to the tight end, O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard, the, the hero of the national championship green, has only been targeted 18 times this year. Tough to get it to their tight ends with a young freshman quarterback. It's a risky throw. Peyton can do it, right, Peyton? But if, there's high risk, high reward with the tight end. I agree. Yeah, a lot of times but those throws on the outside, right, outside yeah. the hash marks are safer, right? There's no... Not much of a chance of a tip ball, and those are going more to the wide outs. Second down, 10. Alabama up 14 to nothing. Calvin Ridley in motion. Fake to him. Hurts steps up, goes deep. Almost intercepted. So it's your team. You've been watching them a lot as we watch this uh, underthrow right here. You know, even this game, if they happen to lose this game, they're still alive. Might get some guys healthy. What do you think about your football team? There's no question. These games are relevant again, right? Yes. Tennessee, Alabama always used to be a relevant game. It's relevant again. It hasn't been maybe in years past. And so that's where we are. That's where Bush Jones has brought us back. And uh, like you said, we love to win this game, but if for some reason it doesn't happen, we have every chance to be in Atlanta, uh -huh. and that's the goal. And when you get to Atlanta, anything can happen. So Butch has done a heck of a job, and we're really lucky to have him. He's brought Tennessee back to, oh, to where we used to be, to where Johnny Majors and Philip Foreman had it, and uh, it, it's really exciting to be part of the Tennessee football program again. Yeah, the matchup we were going to look at and be interested in Cam now, Robinson. Start, offense number 74. Five-yard penalty. Is Cam Robinson. It remains third down. Left tackle Cam Robinson has Derek Barnett, the, the elite pass rusher for Tennessee, and you can assume that he's going to try to cheat that snap any time he can with that guy to the outside. Hey, I didn't know if I was going to do this, but as you leave, I just wanted to say, so great to have you in our booth. <laughs> I'm telling you, oh, all you, kind of plugs up here we get. No, right? You know, I've got to get <laughs> you, <laughs> Direct TV Gary Danielson. Nationwide will be yeah. fired up for this, right? I've got to get you out to dinner on this. Here we go. Come back. Here we go. Fumble. Got it, baby. Wow. There you go. Forced turnover. Derek Barnett. We talked about the matchup and why they had to get off the line. And what does he do? Come around the outside. Cam tried to hold him. Sacks him and punches it loose. He's playing. we got to get a touchdown. Tennessee's got to get a touchdown and build off this momentum. Great play. He's been, he's been a stud all year. He's been awesome for us. And I think Demario Mixon, number 40, is the guy who was the recipient of the yes. fumble this time. So but you can't leave now. Hey, Peyton, you just no, got a lucky that's turnover. Right. That's right. Him. That's exactly right. I don't miss those hits right no. there, Gary. <laughs> I, I, I do not miss those. 
Let's see what they do down here. Do they run the quarterback? That's when the offense for Tennessee has worked the best. I want to score on first or second down. I want to stay out of third down versus these guys. Well, it's going to be second down. That's Camara. Jonathan Allen defensively. Ten minutes to go, first half. What would you be thinking, uh, Peyton, if you had a, a mismatch of an offensive lineman? How do you try to combat that as a quarterback? Like I said, three-step drop, quick phase, shotgun, get it out of your hand. These, these first and second down sacks have been killing us uh, prior to. So get in there. Uh, he got can it. you say that? Can nice I do that? call. Of course uh, you can. All right, good. Sorry. Of course you can. <laughs> Second down, right here. You got it. Don't even get in the third down. That's Don't get in the third down. They're too good at stopping you on third down. So that's what I used to talk about. Let's go first down, second down, first down. Right. Avoid the avoid the the, the third down play. Kamara is such an excellent running back. We got a ball game now. Aaron Medley for the extra point. Parker Henry will hold. Camara's touchdown has cut the lead in half after Hertz fumble when hit by Derek Barnett. Let's take a look at the fumble again. Well, coming around the blind side, Hertz feels him but does not understand how quick he can close it. Tennessee had gained 11 yards prior to that turnover, and then they gained 11 yards for the touchdown. As Peyton just said, we've got a ball game now. Thank you. Thanks for coming uh, in here, guys. Thank you all. Thank you, Pastor Byrne. Thank you so much. I've got Gary and Eli penciled in for Tuesday. I'm available. Bring nachos. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Amir. All right, Adam. Thank you. Alvin Kamara after the fumble forced by Derek Barnett. And we're hearing Rocky Top. First composed by Felice and Blue Drove. Brian, I knew I was going to get that in. You got it. But uh, when we talk about also, Vern, the stars for Tennessee. Yeah. Got all those great players out for Tennessee. That means their stars have to lead the way. And Barnett made the biggest play for Tennessee in the game so far. Oh, that's going to be a penalty. Yep. Out of bounds. The official is. Straddling the pylon, if it goes to his right, he knows. Receivers have elected to put the ball in play at the 35-yard line. First down. Aaron Medley. Quick and Loans presents today's scholar athletes for Alabama, Minka Pitts Fitzpatrick, and Joshua Dobbs for Tennessee. Quick and Loans' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating a thousand dollars to Alabama and Tennessee's general scholarship fund. Well, we're going to see what kind of patience that Lane Kiffin has. They've had success running the outside zone to the right. Do they start running again? Yes, they do. And they come to the right. Damian Harris is caught at the 48-yard line. How disciplined can Lane Kiffin be? Remember, he was the coach of this Tennessee team. He wants to show him what a great play caller he is. Will he have the patience to stick and grind it out? They come up. It's Damian Harris again across midfield. And down at the 48. Nine minutes to go, first half, 14 7. Yes, again, and this time, nothing there. Elliot Berry, number 41, he and Billy Evan Berry, so much a part of this defensive unit, and now here comes the crowd. How about that tackle by Berry? He's really a number three linebacker in there. Kirkland and Jalen Reeves Maven are their starters. They've got their backups in. They've lost McDowell, and in comes Barry. Wow, what a play. Third and seven. Our Darius Stewart 
across the backfield. Gets a little swing pass and gets a terrific block from Calvin Ridley. Oh, boy. A remember wide receiver we, highlight. For you. Remember we talked about the passing patience that Lane Kiffin gives his quarterback. Even though it's third and long, he still throws the ball behind the line of scrimmage. 96 passes behind the line of scrimmage or less than 10 yards downfield. Rich Green, how about that defense? Emmanuel Mosley read that from the snap. Just get the feeling with this Tennessee. I don't know if they can match up talent wise. Peyton said they've come a long way, but they have seven of their 18 returning starters not playing in this football game. They had 18 returning starters for 2016, and seven of them are injured. Hurts gets a good block. He's in the secondary. Foot race at the 10. Touchdown, Alabama. Miller Forrestal, number 87, was the man who supplied the block. Now that has quieted the crowd. Well, we've talked about Alabama for a long time, Vernon. One of the things that's really underrated about this football team, and it's been for as long as I can remember, of how clutch of a football team they are. They make plays in the clutch. People make runs at them. Remember the onside kick against Clemson? They've done it time after time. They just seem to be able to answer the bell. Really crafty play here. They sneak the tight end instead of a pass this way. It's actually a run. They get the lead blocker downfield. Our Darius Stewart gets a good block, number 13. Two blocks, and that running quarterback, Alabama with a running quarterback, it almost doesn't seem fair, does it? <laughs> You're right. Jalen Hurts with the touchdown. 21-7. 21-7 after that 45-yard run from Hertz. With backups in the game, oftentimes misalignments happen. I'm pretty sure Tennessee misaligned on this play and helped make a play that should have gained five or six yards into a big touchdown play. We'll show you. Adam Griffith will kick off. And it's Barry again, the deep man with Micah Abernathy. But uh, here is the kick, and Griffith sails it through the end zone. Watch, Tennessee has backups. Colton Jumper is going to tell the other linebacker right here to move over. Now watch what happens. When Alabama shifts, both linebackers to the left Alabama gets exactly what they want. Both linebackers are caught up in the trash. I think it was a misalignment and a mistake by the Tennessee defense playing with a lot of subs. Now the Volunteers trailing again by 14. And they've got the ball at the 25. That's her seventh carry for 29 yards. Camara has carried it six times, but he has been held in check. I'll tell you who else has been held in check. Last year, Dobbs rushed 16 times for 19 yards. He's off to even worse start this game. Bird goes right. It's going to be third down. Yes, sack yards are included, but 19 yards. There were 38 yards in sacks last year, and already in this game, the sacks are mounting up. But Tennessee does not seem to be able to spring their quarterback in the running game, and that's a big part of their run game. Third down. They need six to sustain the drive. Jalen Hurd is the running back. And will Alabama attack again? They've been doing it every time in third down. Looks like they will. Delayed blitz, Dobbs. Nice catch. It's really close, though. Yeah. Yep, he got Jennings. over the, got it. I think got over yeah. the line. Listen, I said this a week ago, but people might not have heard it. I think the people that for this football team 
that provides the energy are the receivers for Tennessee, especially number 15. First down 10, that's Ethan Wolf, number 82 in motion. Here comes the run blitz. I might have misread that one, Josh, and Josh Dobbs. Could have kept that one and had some positive yards. Some murmuring among the uh, Tennessee crowd. Watch Dalvin. it get closed down. Could have kept it to the right. Thought he had a play to get positive yards and break out. Problem is, Alabama's been giving up yards, but it's been mostly in the past. Ole Miss and Arkansas combined for 821 pass yards. Can Tennessee find some passing yards? Dogs. Butch Jones is working the referees for the next call right now. He knows, obviously, he's not going to get that one. Was there a tug on the play? Not enough. Marlon Humphrey had a little bit of a rough night against uh, Arkansas, giving up a touchdown of pass interference, but uh, Marlon Humphrey's played a lot of football for Alabama. That was Brandon Johnson, the intended receiver. Let's see if Tennessee has to keep in help on this third and long. Three down. No. no. Dobbs near side. Camara, but it's way short. Yeah, but you could see Dobbs had that clock going off in his head. I mean, third and ten, he threw to his first receiver two yards downfield. That's what a pass rush. See, a pass rush there does not show up in the stats, but effectively that was pass rush early in the game that say really got the stop on third and long. Anthony Averett with the tackle, and that brings on Trevor Daniel. And this is already going to be his sixth punt of the first half. Eddie Jackson is deep. Outside the numbers again. Jackson will run it back. Nice tackle. At the 23 yard line. Evan Berry not only returns it, he defends it. 49 yard punt. The Geico halftime report coming up. See if uh, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones, and Adam Zucker have donned robes for the halftime. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, every series is crucial. Right. But right now, with 440 to go, the Tennessee defense, if they give up a drive in points, Alabama's going to get it again at the start of the second half. Probably the most crucial part of the game if Tennessee wants to mount another comeback in this football game. 440 to go, 21-7. Damian Harris, the running back. And he runs into orange traffic at the 22. Shy Tuttle, first one there. That first by Shy Tuttle. Tennessee has two timeouts remaining. Butch Jones in his fourth year as the head coach at Tennessee. Corner blitz. Whoa, boom. Hurts still has it. The added dimension, you know, Blake Sims gave it to him a little bit that one year that they played, but you can see the offense is now expanded. They're not just the same pounding round team. They still do that effectively when they need to or have to, but now they've added another dimension. They probably don't have as intricate pass offense as the pass. It's just a different pass offense, more deep balls. There's the quarterback rushing list, and Hurts climbing up that list. Blake Sims is the current leader. First down on the last play. Hurts. Gets a good block from Harris, then delivers it after Ridley, who could not hang on to it. Second drop for Ridley. Well, this make or break stretch for the Volunteers. They trailed 21 0 in the first half here, won it against Florida. Amazing finish to the Georgia game last week. Lost in double overtime, and they trail Alabama. So, they have trailed by double digits in every game this year, save one. That was a victory over Ohio University. Hurts. Same play as the touchdown. Yep, gets the ball. What a block he got down to it. 
this time there is a defender with an angle, but holy cow. I think it was O.J. Howard this time that got the block. He was the player that lined up left, came across, and then gets the block. Linebacker this time is in the right spot. Let's see if it makes any difference. No, it did not. He went with the flow. Again, our Darius Stewart gets the block, and then O.J. Howard throws downfield, and you got a 4-6-5 quarterback. There's O.J. Howard, and there's your quarterback getting around the end. Harris caught for a loss. Derek Barnett again. Yeah, Corey Vereen, number 50 that time, beat O.J. Howard on the edge, set the edge and forced it back, and got the uh, negative play for the Tennessee defense. Second and 13, 320 to go. Stewart comes near side. Calvin Ridley been very, very quiet. If I'm Tennessee, I don't lose where he is. They're playing way off of him. Hurts. Toss. Harris cut back. Double teamed and down at the 22 yard line. That'll be just short of the first down. left third and one Joshua Jacobs is the running back on this third down play he gets it and moves to the 20 that will move the chain for Alabama we've seen it firsthand we've been yeah. here for most of it uh, little different challenge they've got here though with Alabama. Jacob still in the backfield. Bradley Bowes in the center looks around to make sure he's got the snap count here. Two men to the left, two to the right. Jalen Hurts, left side, safety down. It's Jacobs. That is some safety down. Cut down at the 12-yard line. One of the great things that Jalen Hurts did on this one was climb up into the pocket. Instead of trying to get behind Barnett, and he knows he's got Cam Robinson, easy to get inside. Cam Robinson, if they did ever huddle again, would have said thanks. Thanks for going up in the pocket. <laughs> Second down. <laughs> I have to, I have to tell him tomorrow, I think, nowadays. Uh-oh, oh, stumbled. Yes, he did. And that was bound in the air. How significant is that if it's you're huge. a volunteer? It's huge, and I do think Jalen Hurts was just trying to throw it away. He becomes discombobulated. He wants to fake the pitch. It is a pass play. Now he's just trying to throw it away. Great play by Shai Tuttle, and it's a good thing Hurts made the tackle, or we would have had a knot for Tennessee. Plenty of time in the half now. Two timeouts left. I think there were maybe 10 people in this stadium that didn't think Alabama was going to score on that drive. Right. And now it's turned the other way around. From the 32, Dobbs. And safety valve, check down. Jalen Hurd. Ronnie Harrison made the tackle. Harrison in this game has a 58 yard interception return for a touchdown. Second down and the volunteers will hustle. Just remember the right side of this Tennessee line two true sophomores Chance Hall and Jack Jones both started a year ago for Tennessee as true freshmen in Tuscaloosa in that close football game. Is at six. Wouldn't be the worst thing to take a timeout here and make sure you have the right play going. Yep, they did. Time called with 117 to go before the break. 21-7, Alabama. CBS. Just to give you an idea of how good this Alabama defense is, remember Tennessee put up 684 yards last week. In this game, 
33 plays for 41 yards so far in the game. Dobbs across the middle. Incomplete intended for Jawan Jennings. And again, Joshua Dobbs popped as he lets it go. Against Texas A&M, Josh Dobbs is not a great intermediate passer. Against A&M, he was two for 14 on passes thrown more than 10 yards downfield. Just not his game. Play action passes, yet. Yeah. Pocket passes, tough for him. Snap on third down. Dobbs across the middle. Almost intercepted. Dobbs down to the ground again. Ryan Anderson, Jonathan Allen had a meeting at Joshua Dobbs. Just look at the electric speed coming off the edge in the pass rush here on Dobbs. He can feel this. Number 22 that time, Ryan Anderson, is just, he can feel him. After a while, you know, backside, it hurts. Front side intimidates you, because you can see it coming. And so Trevor Daniel will punt for the seventh time in the first half. This is high and deep and taken on the fair catch from Eddie Jackson. Well, what kind of day has Tim Williams had so far? Well, I will say this about this Alabama defense. Tim Williams is one of the elite pass rushers in all of college football. The SEC has probably seven or eight top pass rushers, three of them play for Alabama. Tim Williams, who you're watching, Ryan Anderson, who we just had the last highlight of, and Jonathan Allen, number 93. When you have three of the top seven pass rushers for you, chances are you got a pretty good pass rush. First down 10 now, Alabama with a 14-point lead and 62 seconds to go in the first half. Damian Harris gets around the edge. Well, Gary, you mentioned some of the defensive ends. Let's take a look at your list. Well, I mean, just some of them. I mean, Arden Key from LSU. We'll see him in a few weeks against this Alabama team. Kyle Lawson is, when healthy, one of the best in college football. Charles Harris. A lot of people don't know about him. The NFL does. Damian Harris with the carry. And I tell you, one more first down for Alabama, and we might see something going deep here. Maybe a deep 50-50 ball to Calvin Ridley. Throw something deep. If a mistake happens, they live with the downfield. I'd look for a deep throw here pretty soon. Four wides. Hurts. That was intended for Deeter. Garrett Deeter. Yeah, I thought yep. it was Deeter. Tennessee took a timeout there. I wonder if they had the wrong group of people out there or maybe not enough players out there. It's a full house here at Neyland Stadium. The current capacity, 102,000. The stadium is 95 years old. There were 17 rows of seats on the west side back in 1921 when the Tennessee team defeated Emory and Henry. 27 to nothing. Just, uh, we had to get out of that package. We did not forget about Miles Garrett being one of the great <laughs> defensive right. ends. We remember the Sean Hall, his partner over there, ain't bad either. No, we'll, not we'll at all. We'll see them next week. But Tim Williams right there is a beast in pass rush. First down 10. That last play did not count. Time was taken just before the snap. I, I, I think it was a misalignment again. I'm sure Bob Shoup up in the box, the defensive coordinator didn't like it, didn't want to give up a big play, and called timeout. Empty backfield, three to the right. Now they're going to need four. Hold it back to yeah, design play. And that is going to be well short of the first down. LaCroy Lewis, number four. Alabama will take a timeout now. So they have two remaining, and they have a 14-point lead. 21-7, and we invite you to join We Need to Talk, 8 o'clock Tuesday night. CBS Sports Network. 
Allie the force of regular on that program. But Allie gets a week off. She should be following the Cubs. What do you mean? I think she probably is. Husband there? Yeah. Joe Smith. Up the middle. Joshua Jacobs. Now what? 14 seconds to go. Either ground the ball really quickly and spike it or use a timeout. Alabama took a timeout. Open field that tackle that time. Alabama has been conservative just enough, but the running game has got them into position to throw one wherever they want and try a field goal, at least. If it is incomplete, I'm just saying, Adam Griffith, he tried one from 57, I remember. This would be about right. Yeah. I think that's what Nick said, said in the huddle right there. You can do anything you want except kick a field goal with one second to go. Well, as you know, I think the Florida LSU game has been rescheduled. It right. will be played in Baton Rouge. Some controversy about that. Yeah, but I, I, I think the commissioner finally got everybody to get on the same page. Florida uh, gave up a home game. They're going to get a, a return home game next year from LSU. And all things considered where they were a week ago, much better this week. Yeah. Turning on seven, Calvin Ridley, top of the screen. There are three wides to the right. Now, O.J. Howard will line up just off his right tackle. And they throw it. Nice play. Calvin Ridley. <laughs> I was wondering when Alabama would ever won one of those RPOs where everybody else has been doing it against them. That's exactly what they did. Their linemen were downfield. It was only three yards. I think Alabama wanted to say, you know what? We've had two of these score against us. Let's see if we can score one of those against someone else. Nine seconds to go. They do have one timeout left. Oh, he could. Hurts has it. I thought it would be close the way as far as he ran it like that. Yeah, he could run out the half. I think the half has ended. Nick was signaling timeout, but the play was not over. It was too wide of a play. Now, nope. The official is going to give Alabama one second on the clock. Oh no! Fake to the left side. Hurts is carrying it. Four, three. Player is down. That's a good call. That's a good call. Clock ran out another second. Alabama will get a try for an extra extra field goal. One play. We talked about it, but I mean, you just got to play it the way it is. You're not going to, you got to go field goal here. And Butch is arguing, but he's going to lose this one. Here is Adam Griffith, born in Poland, adopted by a couple that lives in Calhoun, Georgia. This is a tough drive for Tennessee, Vern. Six plays. They went 54 yards, five of them on the ground to get into field goal range. One more. Watch the clock. He's, He's down. down. And on the wide side of the field, Nick Saban is calling timeout to the official nearest him. He was right next to the referee the whole time. Cole Mazza is the snapper. Bateman will hold it. Adam Griffith. And, and Butch can't freeze him like last week. Up. Oh. Missed it. Sure did. On the other hand, it was just no points. And what didn't go the other way? It's a win for Alabama on one second field goals. <laughs> Wide right. And we've reached the half. Now it's time for Inside Access presented by AT&T, official sponsor of the SEC. Here's Allie with Nick Saban. Coach, after both of Jalen Hurts' turnovers in the first half, he responded with scores. What's your assessment of how he managed that half? Well, I, I think he could play better. I think we could throw the ball better. I think we got to protect better. 
Uh, turnovers are the difference in the game. They got to score off a turnover. We lost to score off a turnover. So we just got to play better. Your defense held Tennessee to under 50 total yards. How are you able to make them such a non-factor? Well, we have to do it the whole game. 60-minute game. They're a good second-half team. We got to be ready to play in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Right, thank you. Yes, they have been a very good second half. I, I think he's been watching the games. So I, I think so too. <laughs> That's the end of the first half, 21-7 the score. Let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studio. All right. Snap goes to Dobbs, pressure off the near side, intercepted Alabama, touchdown Ronnie Harrison. Pressure hurts, gonna be hit, balls fumbled, it's loose. Get in there. Right. He got Can it. Can you say that? Can nice I do that? Nice call, of course right. you can. We welcome all of you back to Knoxville, 21-7, Alabama, and Allie is with Butch Jones. Coach, your defense only allowed two scores, but what was going on with the offense in that first half? Well, it all starts with the line of scrimmage game, and we knew it was going to be this type of game. It's a maximum seven game in our terminology, and our kids are grinding it out, and we have to get it to the fourth quarter, and they've been relentless in all season long. And so this is no different than any other games. You're playing a quality opponent, and you have to continue to just grind and work exceptionally hard, which they will. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Ali, thank you. Alabama will get the ball to open the second half. Aaron Medley will kick for the Volunteers. Decides to run it out. And he gets it out to the 20. It was buried. Well, we're back here, and I've got a guy sitting to my left who doesn't have a bathrobe on now. <laughs> it's an unaccustomed position for you. That worked well, by the way. That was fun. You yeah. know, um, you can see with a fan in paint, you know, get oh in there. My you gosh, know, that, yeah. That's with all the people that watch these games. But here it is. You start to think, could this be like Florida? Has that feel? You know, 21-3, 21-7, but only 41 yards in offense. They had 162 against Florida. It, Tennessee, as much as they need stops, can they find some offense against this great Alabama defense? That's really, you know, when Butch says, can we get into the fourth quarter? How does he do that without finding some more offense? First down, 10. Oh. Might have illegal motion here. Let's take a look at first half trends. Well, as you can look at the quarterbacks here, the passing game, Jalen Hurts and both Josh Dobbs, neither of them have been very effective throwing the football both under a lot of pressure when they try to throw this ball, especially Josh Dobbs. There's the total yards again. But the real key, remember, Tennessee held Alabama a year ago with a Heisman Trophy running back, Derrick Henry, to 117 rush yards. In the first half, Alabama rushed for 245 yards. Many of those from this man, the freshman quarterback, Jalen Hurts, who on first down, I believe has enough to move the chain. Yes, he does. Yeah, he's gone over 100 yards rushing. But, you know, right behind him, they, I mean, Harris has got it. I mean, they've got their running backs the last three games as a group have been averaging eight yards per carry. Damian Harris goes to the right this time. Harris, first count. Emmanuel Mosley, number 12, gets him. Harris is sophomore from Richmond, Kentucky. He'll give away now to Joshua Jacobs. We saw Bo Scarborough to begin the game. He carried twice, and we've not seen him back at all since then. Hurts will throw. Oh boy, mix up there as uh, Gary Dieter expected it. Well, we talked about how both offensive coordinators, Mike DeBoard and Lane Kiffin, are managing their quarterbacks. Look at Nothing deep, nothing in the middle. If they're going to do anything, they're going to make mistakes. They want to throw it to the sideline or short. Bo Scarborough is now on the field. And again, stars. Here's a star matchup here. They're Derek Barnett right there. He moved just as I was going to do it. 
Calvin Ridley bottom of the screen. It's third down and seven. Timeout. Crimson Tide. Prior to the expiration of the play clock, timeout, Alabama. First time out of the half. Less than a minute played in the third quarter of play. 21-7 timeout, Alabama. Aerial coverage today is provided by Goodyear. For 60 years, Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest rivalries. More than 102,000 gathered here in Neyland on the banks of the Tennessee River. Notice that Tyler Watts in 2001 had two 100-yard rush games. Hurts, nine carries, 108 yards. 21-7, third down and seven. Our Darius Stewart in the backfield. Derek Carnett's going to get, or the offensive line is going to get called. Carnett flinched into the neutral zone. I'm not sure if Alabama moved. Prior to the snap. Ball start. Offense, 88. Five yard penalty. Hangs third down. OJ Howard. I think he was uh, a little bit outside of the picture on the bottom right here. Whoa, I'm not sure who caused who to flinch there, to tell you the truth. Surely Derek Barnett did not see that, did he? No. He was looking no. inside. It's almost as if the defensive player forced. O.J. Howard to move in the slot. Third and 12. Blitz. Little pass into the flat. Nothing there. Damian Harris pursued and brought down by Elliott Berry. It's as if Bob Shoup, defensive coordinator for Tennessee, figured out in long yardage there was no way Lane Kiffin and Nick Saban were going to allow their quarterback to turn the ball over. They were playing screen all the way. Barry never took one step back. And that brings on J.K. Scott. Interesting. Two defenders back for Tennessee. Do they have a different looking return here? Maybe a reverse or something? Have not seen that. No. Scott, not his best. Oh, they're faking it to one side. It didn't work. Oh, that was Camaro back, and he did dance out of the way as the ball approached him. And we've got a little. Didn't touch him. Josh Smith nope. was kind of doing a gimmick return, trying to draw the defense to him, but it, it wasn't a good enough punt to return. Time call. 13 10 to go, third quarter. There's the Vol Navy, began in 1962. And there's Joshua Dobbs, tough day so far. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the talk always has been a mobile quarterback gives Alabama's defense problems. That can be true if you have the guys around you to help. And this time, the offensive line has been overrun by this Alabama defense. Forced him into a interception on a screen pass. Up front, they've overpowered the offensive line. Same thing I looked at a week ago watching the Arkansas game. The front seven for Alabama just really destroyed the game plan for Arkansas. And in the second half, they started out really hot, the Alabama defense. They went three and out for minus three yards, an interception and interception to put the game away. First down 10 here. Side. It's Alvin Kamara. And again, at the start of the game, the Vols had two offensive starters out with injuries. Jay Sean Robertson and Dylan Wiseman. They've lost Brett Kendrick in this game. So you've got Coleman Thomas, Denzel Bullware, and Drew Richmond on that left side of the line. Second down, nine. Dobbs 
throws from the line. Right over that. Four white shirts Im immediately surrounded. Yeah, and that's again the difference between Alabama. We talked about it against AM. Tennessee was able to sh throw these short passes, and they ended up with 314 yards after the catch. Today, they're getting gobbled up quickly. They're down five. Let's dodge. Got it. First down at the 40 yard line. Now that was a courageous throw by Josh Dobbs. Maybe his best of the game. Pressure was coming in on him. He could feel it. Crossing route right over the middle. Remember, he has not thrown a lot over the middle of the field. This time delivers a good pass under pressure as he let it go. Catch was made by Jawan Jennings. Now Hurd is back in the backfield. Hurd nine carries for 30 yards in the game. You say nothing. I mean, I don't know how Ruben Fott reads it that fast. I just don't know how he knows. Actually, it was a run stunt. He's coming in. That's a design run stunt. He was in there, and he's coming even right at the snap and expecting if it comes his way, he's right there, and he's fast enough if it's not there to chase it down from behind. Leaves a second down, 11. Oh, that's the other guy. Number 20, Deion Hamilton. 10, 20, doesn't matter. They're yeah. all elite athletes. Watch him run this down. Inside out. One bit of a mishap with the pitch, and Alabama eats it up. Third down, 14. Alongside Joshua Dobbs, four man rush. Dobbs to Herb, it'll be fourth down. It's a tough throw. I mean, that's the second time in this game. Josh Dobbs took a two yard pass on third and real long. I mean, there's no way that Jalen Hurd's going to catch a pass with his back to the defense and be able to get a first down from that situation. Maybe a crossing route. But not a back like that. That brings on Trevor Daniel again. Eddie Jackson awaiting the punt at the 20 yard line. Oh dear. Yep. A shank. That might be close to the 50 yard line. It was so bad. I don't even know if he gets a first down here. My gosh. Right at the 49 yeah, yard line. 49 yard line. A 16 yard punt. Out of bounds. Alabama dominating. It's been a while since we've welcomed the duck. I think it's appropriate to do so right now. The Aflac trivia question which former Alabama player, assistant coach under Bear Bryant, later became the head coach at Tennessee? Hmm. When we tell you, we'll go, oh, yeah, I remember that. Well, you are you're I, kidding like you don't know it. You got it yesterday. What are you doing? You. Well, I didn't want to. Yeah. All right, it. you had it. You nailed yeah, it. Yeah, I did get it. I did. Well, there's a uh, remember Alabama's number one in the nation in plus 40 yard plays and plus 50 yard plays. Is this where Lane Kiffin does the old play action pass bomb? Oh, this one you mean. Across the middle, crossing pattern. Is that what you were talking about? Well, it wasn't open deep, and he was smart enough to go. Watch our Darius Stewart feel the defender, grab this catch, and go inside. He doesn't fade away from the throw. Watch how he catches it and goes to meet the ball and then loses a half a yard. That is not taught. That is just an athlete being able to pluck it out. And they'll test the left guard spot now, Damian Harris. That's his 13th carry of the ball game for 80 yards. 
Last week against Arkansas, Alabama went over 500 yards in just 51 plays. The next snap for Alabama will be their 51st of the game, and we're midway through the third quarter. Play action. Hurts under pressure, rolls out, throws it away. He had Ridley, but a good pass rush that time. Couldn't get it off. Colton Jumper was the fellow providing the pressure. Yeah, all he does is make plays, Colton Jumper. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I admit, they got some good players out, not out there, but Colton Jumper is pulling his weight in this for, for this football team. Darren Kirkman is the starter. He is one of three defensive starters unable to go. They expect him back soon. But Jumper has played really well in the last three, four games. This is going to be close. Will they have to burn another timeout? I think they might have to here. They did get it. Oops. He's got two in front of him. Very <laughs> low. Dragged down with a first and goal at the two yard line. Very interesting there. It caught Tennessee off balance. Alabama had only 10 men on the field, and when they substituted, the official tried to slow the pay down. Alabama very smartly snapped it with one second, and I don't think Tennessee was ready. First and goal. Hurts gets a block, strolls in. Untouched. Touchdown. Alabama. Nine oh two to go in the third. Trayvon Diggs, number seven. Stefan Diggs' brother, the All-American from Maryland, now playing for the Minnesota Vikings. Big block on that play. Adam Griffith for the extra point. Well, here's the sequence, Vern, of what happened. Alabama's confused. The clock was running down. Alabama substitutes late. So the officials are holding off the play. Just four seconds to go. Will they get it going? They're snapping. As soon as the official backed up, it was almost like a quick snap. And Tennessee was really not set up to stop it. And then one play later, play action pass. Block on the right side by Diggs. And a walk in by the quarterback. Welcome back to Neyland Stadium, where Alabama leads Tennessee 28 to 7. We talk about the passionate fans of the SEC all of the time, and this one is right there with the best of them. His name is Wesley McNeely. And the reason we're showing Wesley is not because he hasn't missed a home game in over a decade, but he was celebrating the amazing Hail Mary pass against Georgia, and he was celebrating so hard that he broke his ankle. He avoided having surgery. That way he could travel to Texas A&M for the game. He got surgery this week on Tuesday, and he is here, as promised, to not miss a single home game this season. Gary overheard him talking in the airport, challenged me to find him, and we officially found him. Gary, there's Wesley for you. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like is he was in front of me in the Starbucks landing. Ah, going really slow. Ah, That's how I noticed it. <laughs> Here is the return from Evan Berry. Nice. Well, Tennessee has not had anything going offensively. Look at this. Punt interception. Punt punt. Touchdown after a fumble. Punt punt punt. <laughs> You know, when you have 41 plays, 53 yards, those are always really ugly. And that's a bad possession chart right there. And a great defense. If you don't bring it against this defense, Alabama doesn't beat themselves. You have to have precision throwing the ball, pass blocking, running. They just don't beat themselves, especially on defense. Joshua Dobbs. And it off on the sweep. Tyler Bird, the freshman from Naples, Florida. Rashawn Evans makes the stop here. Well, you know, we did the game just a week ago. Tennessee trailed that game 28 to 7. Just a different feel, though. The offense, like we talked about it, the offense was gaining yards, but turning it over. Here, they just can't find yards. Big difference in the field. Let's see. A couple first downs, maybe it'll change. Here's Dobbs. Got Ethan Wolf. 
And he breaks, well, he can't break the tackle, but he does get a couple of extra yards. Yeah, great read that time by Josh Dobbs. Looked out wide like it was a wide receiver uh, a screen to the outside, and Ethan Wolf gets into the middle of the field, the easy pitch and catch. Now, Hurd is the running back behind Dobbs. There's Ethan Wolf, sets up on the left side. Hurd. Sean Dion Hamilton with the tackle. Jalen Hurd missed last week's game. He is now replaced by Kamara. Kamara's been held in check, too. He ran wild against AM. But so far in this game, seven carries for 18 yards. And only two catches. At the 35, Josh Smith. And we talked about how you have to be precise against Alabama. A great route by Josh Smith here. He goes out, out on the stem, comes back, ball to the outside. If you're going to go to run and beat this defense, you have to run precise routes, and that was. Stacked receivers on either side of the ball. Day. Dobbs is now plus six times negative yards. Christian Miller with the tackle this time. Yes, Alabama continues to get their second line players in. They've been a great improvement in Alabama as these spread tempo teams. Alabama's got better at getting their rolling their second line players into the game. Christian Miller comes in fresh and makes the tackle. the backfield wide to the left. Dobbs looks that direction. He's got him wide open. And Malone around the defender, Anthony Averett, and picks up another first down. I think this time the Alabama defense was a bit confused. Two guys going deep, and they had double covered the slot, but I don't know why Anthony Averett was bailing on that play. He should have had a man-to-man -man a little tighter. Gain of 12, first down, Tennessee. And they'll drive it up the middle. Alvin Kamara. Well, Kirby Smart was the defensive coordinator last year, and Jeremy Pruitt has taken his place. And uh, the rankings haven't changed much, no. have they? It seems like Kirby Smart watching his Georgia team this year, he was a much better coach last year. Are you suggesting the, the good players? Quality of players? <laughs> yeah, maybe. And of course, Georgia took it on the chin today. 17-16. Whoa! Same play that he hit Ethan Wolf over the middle. Exact same play. This time he threw it out to the back, and Alabama does not let you throw those short passes. See the middle? They had the guy in the middle again. Dobbs made his mind up that time. He figured Alabama would cover the same guy over the middle. They did not. He could have gone to the middle and got the same game. Eddie Jackson with the stop for the Crimson Tide. Third down, 10. Pressure coming in. Pass it to Jawan Jennings. Ron Jennings comes up with more 50-50 balls than any receiver in this league. As tough as you can be, fourth down and five, but he hangs and he fights, and you're not going to outfight him for a football. Good coverage by Mika Fitzpatrick, though. When you have third and ten and you give up a five-yard pass, that's a win. Aaron Medley will try to tack three on on fourth down and six. This is a 37-yard field goal effort for Medley. Snap a little high, but controlled, and right down the middle. Finally, something for Tennessee offensively. Time call. Kick for Medley. And they'll take a knee. 
Let's get the duck back at the center stage. And the answer Aflac. to the Aflac trivia question, the, what, the question, which former Alabama player and assistant coach under Bear Bryant later became head coach of Tennessee, Bill Battle. Saw Bill, the athletic director at Alabama, for the game. There's a list of those on both sides of, of the rivalry. Dave Hart, AD now at Tennessee. Lane Kiffin, of course, one year the head coach here. Kind of a memorable year. Derek Ansley, Mike Bolmer. And here come the Crimson Tide. Lane Kiffin. Of course, the headliner is Lane Kiffin. Yes. I would think so. Deservedly so. Yeah, one year, and then famously left to take the USC job. Here's Hertz. Deep left side, double coverage. He's got it. That's Calvin Ridley. Yeah, you know it on first down. Pretty soon, Calvin Ridley looked like he was going to go to the post. Very patient route. Watch him come in and then out to a deep flag right here. Alabama throws a lot of post routes. This time he's got a safety, bracket him to the outside, and a perfect throw from Jalen Hurts. Gain of 31. Damian Harris bounces out of the And battles his way inside the 30, just inside the 30. Kendall Vickers, there's the pitch to Calvin Ridley. He goes around the right side. And of course, that counts as a pass, and the receivers actually like, instead of handing it to him, since they catch so many balls, that's actually safer than handing it to him. They're used to catching the ball in the air, it counts as a pass. I'd like it if I was a QB. Well, yeah, well, I'd like it if I was a receiver. <laughs> that's right. The stats go up. Got it. Another one, the other way. Yeah. Get around the corner. Our Darius Stewart. Let's go back to Adam Zucker for this Heisman watch presented by the new Nissan Titan. All right, Vern, Deshaun Watson and Clemson, they were tested by NC State today. Four turnovers as a team, but in overtime, Watson to Artavis Scott for what would be the winning score. JT Barrett coming off a rough passing day leads the Buckeyes into Madison for a Big Ten Top Ten showdown. Christian McCaffrey out tonight against Notre Dame. Bo Scarborough got the handoff and got inside the 20. Now we understand we've had some technical difficulties for the last 10, 15 seconds. Obviously working on that. Apologies. First down 10. 28-10. Joshua Jacobs is the running back. Stewart and Ridley. No bad read. Oh, yes. Deshaun Golden all over that one. Yeah, that ball could have gone up inside. Joshua Jacobs, the young running back, going left. Watch the end come up top. 
Galden's right there to the outside, makes a good play and forces him. Should have gone inside of A.O.J. Howard's block, and he did not. That's Vickers getting the uh, tape job on the Tennessee bench. Trayvon Diggs in the backfield now, number seven. Comes in motion. Hurts. Steps up. Wow, wide open. O.J. Howard. Down at the one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, everybody that watches Alabama says, how can the guy that was the hero of the national championship game not get more targets? Lane gets very upset when people say that to him. That's his 20th target. He's got 14 receptions. Uh, that's pretty good. Jacobs is the running back now. First down goal. Hurts rolls out. Looks. Says, what the heck? I'll just run it in for the third touchdown on the ground today. That was somewhat of a sarcastic look at the camera there. Like, are you kidding me? You're trying to tackle me with that? Just kind of stared and went, you do a field goal, I drive it down the field. Watch this. One player to the outside, uh, you don't have a chance. Damn. And he goes into the camera. That qualifies, doesn't it? Sarcastic, like uh, no chance to get me. Yeah. What, what did you think? Uh, well, yes. <laughs> it was a sarcastic look. Yes. I'm still looking for the late kick. <laughs> it's man versus millennial. In the great indoors, Joel McHale stars in the new comedy premiering Thursday, October 27th, only CBS. Thirty-five ten. Final 49 seconds, third quarter. Right, this is the third time in five years as we look at that last touchdown pass play. At least Lane thought it was going to be a touchdown play, just short. You know. And Lane is good at sarcastic, let me just tell you that. I'm, yeah. <laughs> He's not really good at it. Wouldn't disagree with that at all. <laughs> Through the end zone. And a touchback. <laughs> Jalen Hurts, Channel View, Texas, in the Houston area. Just think about it. High school football player a year ago watching Alabama play football for the national championship. A five star number one recruit, Blake Barnett, was ahead of him, redshirting. He still accepts the challenge to go to Alabama, comes in for spring football, and wins the job. And Blake Barnett decides to transfer. First down 10, Tennessee 40. Nine seconds to go, third quarter. Dobbs comes the pressure. Complete. As I was going to point out, this is the third time in five years Tennessee has played Alabama as Alabama has been the number one team in the nation. The past two, they lost by 35 and they lost by 31. They're down by 25. Joshua Dobbs now 13 of 24 for a modest 82 yards. And he keeps this one, goes around the uh, left side. Sean Dion Hamilton. That's Dobbs' seventh carry. Still negative yards, minus 31. Again in college ball, sacks come off rushing yardage. I thought I might be around working long enough until they change that but i guess it ain't going to well, happen you should have said make it correct yeah instead of change make it the no. way it should be Here's the rush dobbs gets hit that's just made out on the right side by tyler bird Marlon Humphrey was there. And, and, and the Alabama defensive backs know that with that five-man rush up front, they don't have to back up one step. They just have it thrown in front of them, and they play physical tackle on the catch. End of the third quarter, we'll return to Knoxville after this message and a word from your local station. Now it's kicking in. Now 
of the adrenaline thus far, all for Alabama as they lead 38-10. You see the score by quarter, 35-10. This is the seventh consecutive game the Crimson Tide has gone north of 30 points. The fewest points Jackson they've scored this year, 34. And got a great chance of going over 500 yards again. I, yes. Done it twice. I think they had 499 yards in one game. Ninth punt, Trevor Daniel. Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson. And I mentioned, this is Eddie Jackson. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. I guess that's what it happens when you have six consecutive number one recruiting classes in a row. The Alabama X's are just better than the Tennessee O's. Hmm. My oh my. Forty one to ten. Just watch him. He wants a touchdown. Watch him judge the, as you see the shaking, watch him judge the coverage. As the ball's in the air, he looks up, then he looks down, I'll take it. He looks down twice, and then he goes for it. Makes one guy miss, and nobody's going to catch him. A high school wide receiver with ball skills, exactly what Nick Saban likes to recruit. Another non-offensive Touchdown. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Well, let's take you through what's happened thus far. The ninth straight game with a non offensive touchdown. This was Ronnie Harrison with the interception and the return. It's also the fourth straight game for Tennessee, trailing by 10. Or more at the half. There was Ardarius Stewart on the reverse, adding to the Alabama total. They did cut it to 14 to 7. And Jalen Hurts, oh, this is too obvious. He's hurt them. I'm sorry. In, in, in a lot of ways, and there's been a lot of Hurts putting on a lot of guys with this defense as well. In the meantime, we've not heard that much from Tennessee. Eddie Jackson just a moment ago, 79th. Punt return with a touchdown. Gary refers to these as NOTS, N O T S, as the acronym for non offensive touchdown. Well, and remember, right now, Alabama's defensive scoring and special team scoring is outscoring Tennessee's offense 14 to 10. The kick from Griffith. And let's check in with Allie LaForce. Hey, Vern, a couple injury updates for you. Tyler Bird was limping pretty badly on the sideline. He went to the athletic trainer's table. They worked on his left knee, but they did hand him back his helmet, and he appears to be going in. Evan Berry is on the trainer's table right now, getting his left ankle retaped. All right, Allie. Josh Dobbs, 14 of 25 for 83. Leading receiver is Ethan Wolf, two for 30 yards. Juwan Jennings has caught three, but only for 20 yards. Here's Dobbs. And he finds it alone out to the 31 yard line. Uh, go ahead, Vern. No. Please, uh, Garrett. We, we just were talking again about matching up. How do you match up? Tennessee has a talented football team, but a lot of them are not playing, including key three of their key players. Might be their three best defensive players of four with Derek Barnett are not playing in the game. Tough to match up for Tennessee. Will they be back this season as Tennessee tries to get back in the hunt in the East? Because right now, Florida, if they don't come back, Tennessee in this game will control their own destiny. Third down four. Volunteers after this uh, dead.
devilish stretch of four consecutive games. Do have an open week next week. Alabama returns home against the undefeated Aggies of Texas A&M. Here comes the rush. Dobbs heads right, comes back across the body, completes it, and they hustle toward the first down line. It's Josh Malone. This is the time when Nick Saban really grinds the most. He'll have his team a big lead. He knows there's some bit of complacency with the football team. He's got his backups in there right now. Christian Miller's on the field. Along with Jonathan Allen, he kind of spots him in one at a time. But as Tennessee decides they're going to punt here, you'll hear the crowd. Yeah. And this crowd is emptying out. Let's see if Tennessee has something, though. I would assume Alabama will keep their defense safe on the field. Yes, they have. Nice high and deep and a fair catch called for and taken at the 14 yard line by Eddie Jackson. 12 minutes 37 seconds to go. Crimson Tide is rolling. Our aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear for 60 years Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest Rivalries. One of the things that Nick Saban was upset with as we look at Jalen Hurts with his defense is they had too many plays, 84 plays as a, a defense. He said we couldn't get off the field. When will Nick Saban start resting his players for the big game next week against Texas A&M? Hurts. Our Darius Stewart, Emmanuel Mosley. With the tackle, this was Jalen Hurts when they arrived. <laughs> oh. Got a good laugh on him. Yeah. Second down and nine. Big post Scarborough. Here we go. They've wow. got an angle on him. Can he keep going? Wow. Yes. Oh, he he can. Defender pulled up lane. Micah Abernathy. Scarborough. 85 yards. <laughs> right. To the left side. Oh, nice block up there by Ross Pierce Number 71 came off late, sealed it. Watch Everdathy pull up. He's got a chance and pulls up Lane right at the end of the run. Hamstring. That's a big man running that fast down the sideline. You see why so many Alabama people were excited about his ability. Micah Abernathy. Up and limping as he comes to the near side. Did think when I watched him against Arkansas, he might have finally found it. He struggled early in the year, a little bit with expectations of being the guy this year. I thought he ran well against Arkansas. Look at him. Look at the ability he has to pull away. Like Derrick Henry running down the sideline. Sure didn't did. It? And he, as you said, is a large human being. 6'2, 228. Let's go back and look at the end of the play. Uh, uh, need to do that. Not that is necessary. so unnecessary. He was actually, it, it probably has Alabama A on his glove, and he probably was putting the A right into the face of the, and I'm surprised the official did not call it for unnecessary, not unnecessary, excessive celebration. Well, the guy's got a, Peyton Manning's old jersey. Here's Scarborough. Not pretty at the end. Well, when your team is down 49-10, some postures are 
to be understood. Ouch. Scarborough, 85 yards with the touchdown. In Alabama, if they limp through the rest of this game, they're going to rush for more than 400 yards in this football game. East standings. Tennessee came in, tied with Florida. Florida, as Adam told you, is up on Missouri. Tennessee getting manhandled here at home. Georgia lost to Vanderbilt today. And we've got a new quarterback, Quentin Dormady, has replaced Josh Dobbs. It just wasn't there for Joshua today. 16 of 27 for 92 yards and seven rushes for minus 31. Dormady, right side. Come back. Got it. Josh Malone. Big first play. That's the first pass attempted or completed by Dormady this season. Well, they let, are letting the receivers, Joshua, with the defensive backs. Good coverage. Overrun and half a shove by Fitz, oh, against Fitzpatrick, and they're letting them play. They've been doing that all game, both ways. John Kelly is the running back now. A very good game last week. John Kelly on the carry. And Joshua Dobbs just not to be today. Yeah, he needed more help. He, you know, he's not he's not a drop back passer. He's not one of those guys who's going to stand in the pocket and hurt you with the passing game. He needed help in the running game, and he needed to provide help with his legs. Alabama shut him down in the run game. Second down, seven, Germany. Behind the intended receiver, John Kelly. Dormady, a sophomore. Out of Bernie, Texas, not that far from San Antonio. Last season, 13 of 22 for 209 yards, one TD. Alabama has kept a lot of their secondary in the game, but the front four and linebackers have their backups. Let's hit him. John Kelly catches it and is hurled out of bounds. And the clock stopped at 10.06 to go. Dormady's a tall lad, a six foot four inch, 260 pound sophomore. Yeah, more a pocket passer, not the running type. Here's a fourth down call to see if. Alabama can get off the field, or Tennessee can keep the drive ahead. Same look. Three-man front, but they'll rush five. Normandy, this one's tipped away. Ronnie Harrison. And again, Alabama just does not fear any deep balls. They jump on everything. When you try to make a break, you cut them out of your break, Number 15 won't back up. Why would I want to back up? I know my guys are going to get your quarterback within a second and a half. I'm going to stay right on you. 9.36 to go in this one. The freshman quarterback, Jalen Hurts, is through for the day. And what a day it was. This was a 45-yard touchdown run. One of three that he has scored. The last two kind of eased on him. He can't stop me. Jalen Hurts on the ground, 132 yards on 12 carries. You know, I was watching him, and he has, as we talked about at the beginning, 
great composure. I think that's his strongest attribute to play. Great speed, kind of like Blake Sims' speed. Remember, because Blake was a running back? I think he's got the arm strength of A.J. McCarron, and I think he's got the brain of Greg McElroy. I only did that to get Greg McElroy mad, because you know he will be mad, won't you? No, I thought he was a really good game <laughs> manager. <laughs> of course he I said the brain of... <laughs> Here we go! You need to Greg McElroy, of whom I once said, you're going to run an NFL team before it's all done. Uh, Greg is one of our favorites. I do always <laughs> say, though, it's hard as Cooper Bakeman comes in the game as the, the new backup quarterback. And uh, remember, Cooper started a game a year ago against Ole Miss. Is it going to be a walk for Alabama all the way? I mean, every championship they've had, they've had that tight game. As we talked about Greg McElroy, that game against Auburn, A.J. McCarron. Blake Sims had the game against LSU. And of course, Jake Coker did it against his Tennessee team a year ago. Don't you have the feeling there's going to be that one game that it's going to be at the end, the quarterback is going to have to find a way to win the game. That carry from B.J. Emmons, and here is the Alabama schedule. They only scored 34 against Kentucky. Look at the margin of difference with the exception of the come from behind win at Ole Miss. And yeah. then what's next? Next week, Texas A&M coming to town. Two undefeated football teams with a quarterback who the Alabama fans know. That would be Trevor Knight. Back up, Diggs, yeah. back up offensive line in the game. This is Diggs. Well, Trevor Knight now at Texas A&M, where he has really been a solid leader. He began his collegiate career at Oklahoma. And look at the game he had, Gary, in yeah. the Sugar Bowl against Alabama. He made the deep throws. He made the athletic throws. And even when Alabama had guys covered, Trevor Knight that night was on fire. He was, it was almost a few times I thought he was throwing it right down the chimney. You know, the throw lob to the outside. He is a good deep thrower, very athletic, but uh, he's got some receivers at AM that will challenge Alabama next week. First down 10. This is BJ Emmons, the fourth running back used. And let's check in with Allie LaForce. Hey, Vern, I've been watching Jalen Hurts on the sideline, and he is the definition of calm, cool, and collected. Very similar to Josh Dobbs, except for it's exceptional because of his youth. Coach Saban told us absolutely nothing phases Jalen Hurts, and you can see it down here on the sideline. One of the things that O.J. Howard told me this week is that he has a veteran presence, and he's growing in that each week, and that the team is really buying into it. At first, he was lacking some of the vocal leadership, but he's really picking up on it, and he's been vocal all game today. Well, he has led the Crimson Tide. Not so much in passing, but Gary, they have 400 yeah, yards. We knew it was coming. Russia. And what it, how about the story Nick told about Jalen, his first play fumbling, right? He That's said, right. He said, if I'd, had, if I'd have done that, I, I don't know if I could have survived that when I was in college. First play of the season, his first against USC. He fumbled it. Nick watched him and actually thought more of him the way he handled it. He said nothing phases him. Got to admit, though, he does have the benefit of having a defense that he does not have to press the throws. You know, a punt for Alabama puts that game-breaking defense and punt return team on the field. Well, it's way, way, way too early. Way too early, but it's still worth mentioning. The last time a freshman quarterback led a team to the national championship, 1985, University of Oklahoma. That quarterback, Jamel Holloway. Take you back to that 85 season. Holloway became the first true freshman on quarterback to lead his team. The Sooners went 11 and 1 that year to beat Penn State in the Orange Bowl and captured the title. Rumbling, stumbling Keith Jackson caught yes, that he, pass right there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that stumbling, bumbling tight end is doing radio for Arkansas. There's oh, a fumble and a bumble. He picked it up. Yeah. 
when it's going your way. You know how Jamal Holloway got his ability to start that season in 1985 for Oklahoma? I don't remember. As you watch the fumble being recovered? Yeah. Troy Aikman got hurt. Never got his job back. And Ended wound up, up at UCLA. Yeah, he transferred to UCLA. Sat out. That's the first year I met Rick Neuheisel. Was when Troy was there. Whatever right happened there. to him? I don't know. I think he went into music. Took a guitar. Yes, and, right. you know, <laughs> cutting chords. Well, coming up shortly, we've got a plethora of options here. The Napa play of the game. I've got a feeling we're going to hear from our old friend Eli Gold, the Art uh, Alabama radio announcer who was inducted into the Alabama Hall of Fame. Earlier. So Tennessee has lost controlling the East. Now. Yes. Florida, we talked about it, is going to control the East. And the big change is instead of having that home game against LSU that they've already played, they're going to play it as control now. They lost, they're going to play at LSU. Second down, 11. Four minutes to go. B.J. Evans. Well, Tennessee will end this four-game stretch that has been really a tough one. They'll win two and lose two. Florida, Georgia, then Aggie, the Aggies and Alabama. They've got an open date. And every game, I believe, on the remainder of their schedule is winnable. Well, more than winnable. They have better talent than the people they're going to play at the end of their schedule. They should win them all. And they've got a hope for Florida to lose one football game, and they would go to Atlanta. First down, 10. Emmons. White get around the corner. Lewis carry. Well, Alabama inside the red zone today. Two touchdowns, two of four. And those are the Verizon red zone stats for the Alabama offense this afternoon. And the clock under three minutes to go. And we'll say this, if Tennessee is in this bye week, if they're going to make that run and finish winning the rest of the games, they need to get a little bit more healthy. Yeah, they do. Some will be back, not all. And here's Bateman. Loses yardage back to the 12. Emmanuel Mosley makes the stop. I thought that if Tennessee lost this game, and it was a well-fought game, that even with two losses, if they ran the table, let's say they run the table, Florida loses, and they avenge the loss to Alabama. So let's say Alabama's in the championship. I thought they would have a strong argument for still getting there. They have the second toughest schedule right now as they stand after this game. But this loss this big is going to hurt that argument. Gosh. Louisville is going to stand up and say, uh, that can't happen. That's going to be very interesting. Let's suppose the SEC champion has two losses. Mm -hmm. Well, fourth down, 49-10. And the Jeep postgame show will be coming up when we put this one to bed. which is in 93 seconds of actual playing time. Nick Saban, his team about to win their 19th in succession. They will extend the victory string over Tennessee to 10 games in succession. And a tough one for Butch Jones and the Volunteers. Losing, okay, but losing in this fashion. And it wasn't close. They just no. were, were not as good as, as Alabama. Emmons on the corner gets a good run. It's fourth down. And Evan. the ball will go over on downs on the change. How about this? First time with 400 yards rushing against the green wave of Tulane 24 years ago. Since 2008, basically, we've been watching the excellence of Nick Saban's teams, and this one just looks so different. You know, we, it, it's the same type of defense, but the, it's just a, a totally different look on offense, 
and they're powerful. They, they, they just they force you to stop 11 players on, on offense, and they're going to be a tough out for anybody here. Tennessee in the final 50 seconds to go. John Jordan is They are so strong on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I don't think they're quite as deep. I think they're in front 11 on defense as good as they've ever been. I don't think they're second level like they had last year. I mean, they just yeah. rolled in guys. They could play 10 guys up front. I don't think they're quite as deep, but their pass rush, I, I don't, I, there's no college team that has their pass rush. This one over the right tackle spot, John Kelly gets it. And uh, here comes Nick Saban. Here comes Butch Jones. And absolute total domination by Alabama. Eddie Jackson with a punt return for a touchdown. Let's go down to Alley with Nick Saban. Coach, no team has been able to slow down Tennessee in the second half. Not only did you slow them down, you shut them down. What are you most impressed with this big win today? Well, I think our defense really responded to what happened last week and played great today. And offense did a good job of putting a lot of points on the board and scored on defense and had a great punt return. So we wanted to play a complete game, and I'm really proud of the way our guys did that. Your team now has 11 non-offensive touchdowns. It's the most in any season under you, and we're only halfway through this year. Your defense has been so impressive. Well, you know, you want to play great on special teams, and we got some guys that can make plays on defense and affect the quarterback. And, you know, we've been able to make those plays. I just hope they keep coming. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. And it is time for the Napa play of the game. We'll go back to the first quarter. And this interception from Ronnie Harrison. It started right up the middle. The screen pass was disrupted. Ronnie Harrison plays his man and he gets a gift from there it seemed really tough well let's watch it again and listen to the call from Eli Gold snap goes to Dobbs pressure off the inside intercepted Alabama touchdown Ronnie Harrison touchdown Ronnie Harrison that is going to be the continuation of this remarkable streak of non-offensive touchdowns for the Crimson Tide it wasn't the only one either. 49 to 10, the only team that has really tested the Crimson Tide this year was Ole Miss. They go north of 40 one more time. For Gary Danielson and Allie LaForce, I'm Brim Luntress saying so long from Knoxville. Alabama wins it in big time fashion with Jalen Hurts scoring three touchdowns on the ground. The Jeep postgame show is up next. And we'll come your way after these messages.